Oh, good morning, folks. Uh, this is uh, Ken David Stewart with you again on a Monday morning. I'm going to do episode or podcast number four, Ken David Stewart Show. And um, I want to thank the people who responded uh, yesterday and over the weekend uh, to my podcast, my WordPress blog on uh, Christianity with an Attitude. Uh, thank you very much for listening. And um, today I'm going to do a series on a, on a different topic. Um, the way I kind of work is when I get up in the morning, if I don't have a sub call or anything to go to, because I'm a substitute teacher, um, a retired teacher also, retired mental health worker, actually. And, uh, I've worn a lot of hats in my life. Um, you know, I will ask God, what do you want me to write about today? And he'll put something on my mind. And sometimes it's very risky. And I'm really going to go out and stick my neck way out today. And I'm just asking my listeners that you respect that. Um, because I think this could be helpful to at least one person and hopefully several people, but I leave that in God's hands. And for my Christian audience, um, do not worry. I'm going to continue uh, with my series on Christianity with an attitude. Uh, I am not giving up on that one at all. And, um, you know, I know it's reached some people who've gotten back to me. And this one is just what was put on my heart today. And the topic applies to both Christians, non-Christians, any human being, actually. Because one thing I found about clinical depression, it is no respecter of persons. It's no respecter of religious beliefs or faiths. Uh, you can have no faith or be, uh, you know, tongue-talking, you know, Washington Spirit Christian, and you can still be uh, subjected to uh, the disease of clinical depression. So there's no religious or spiritual boundaries on this whatsoever. I will start by presenting a disclaimer. I'm not a doctor or a pharmacist, and I do not have any formal medical credentials. In other words, take what I say with a grain of salt because I am not a licensed medical practitioner or social worker or anything like that of any kind. If after reading my blog, you have questions about medication, psychiatry, and especially psychotropic magic medications, consult with a licensed medical practitioner, such as your family doctor, psychiatrist, social worker, therapist, professional therapist, um, you know, and, and, and tell them your story. Um, this is just for educational purposes. And even then, you know, I, I would consult with more than one licensed medical practitioner for this reason that they don't always agree. Um, you would think they would, but they don't. Um, they have their own opinions and theories on, um, you know, topics like which type of, uh, you know, psychiatric treatment or, or counseling would be, work best for you, um, whether it be, you know, uh, CBT or whatever's, you know, coming down the pike or is an older technique of psycho, uh, psychiatric, psychiatric treatment. There's many, many different models. And some psychiatrists especially, some believe in biological interventions vis-a-vis -vis medications, others do not. And, you know, this has to be an individual decision between you and your doctor. Uh, if you recognize yourself in any of the blogs I'm, I'm presenting. Um, 
I'm going to talk a lot about my personal experience. And what do you say? I can only write or speak about what I have experienced personally and learn from my independent research. And over the years, I have done a lot of independent research. Although I have gained considerable knowledge on the subject, I'm not an authority on medications or psychi psychiatric best practices. Um, so with that disclaimer out of the way, and I must say too, that I don't feel responsible for any other individual except myself. You know, so whatever you decide is your decision. Yeah, um, you know, I'm not placing myself at any risk because I've already disclaimed I'm not a professional. Okay, but I can share my experience, strength, and hope with you. And now with this disclaimer out of the way, I can now share with you, constant reader or podcast listener, what I've learned and personally experienced on the subject. I've been both a consumer, i.e. patient, or prosumer, and that's someone who both has a psychiatric disability or disorder and has worked in the field as a worker in mental health. So that's my, my take on, that's where I start off with my psychiatric medications, right? I'm a consumer myself. I take them myself. And I have worked with people that had very severe psychiatric conditions. So that makes me a prosumer as well as a consumer. I will state right off the bat that I'm not crazy. This has been medically very verified. I'm eccentric, perhaps, but not crazy. I suffer from a very common medical disorder known as episodic unipolar clinical depression. I also have a condition that runs concurrently. And when you combine both of them, it's known as double depression. Double depression can be a very debilitating mood disorder in which an individual is symptomatic of long bouts of major affective disorder, clinical depression, as well as a low grade but persistent and chronic symptoms of depression when they are in remission from the major episodes of acute depression. Now this is, this is a tough combination. So what basically it means, well, I'll get into it later, I'll explain what it means. What this means to the best of my knowledge is that an individual may still be adequately functional during their times with uh, a condition called dysthymia. Now this is a low-grade depression in which an individual is able to work at a job and carry on most of the tasks involved with daily living, but are unable to function effectively during bouts of major clinical depression. That's the big difference. Uh, many people with uh, dysthymia can, can still hold jobs. They, their relationships might suffer in quality, but they can usually maintain their relationships. And basically, most people might think they're a bit sad at times, but there's nothing really wrong with them. Now, during, in contrast, during a severe bout, of acute major effect disorder, translation depression, the individual usually cannot function effectively at work. They may even lose their job and their family and their social lives. During these times, the suffering, the suffering person may have to apply for long-term disability benefits if they are blessed or fortunate enough to have a group insurance plan with their employer, which includes long-term disability. Or if not, they will need to apply for government social assistance for an income. Although depression and other related mood disorders are significantly prevalent in our society, um, 
these mental disorders can both interfere or destroy lives. Oh, I kid you not, they can destroy lives and do. If proper medical or other therapeutic intervention is not sought, this horrid disease may cause loss of a job or a professional career, contribute to the breakdown of a marriage and or family unit, and cause intolerable anxiety and mental torment. I will not delve into the physical or somatic symptoms of depression in this blog post, but believe this, it always it also causes significant bodily distress uh, or what your doctors will call somatic symptoms. And I will go into this in another blog. I just wanted to do, you know, kind of feel this out, do a short introduction today. And uh, it's, this is very important because usually if you don't suffer from major depression yourself or dysthymia, you know somebody who does, and often that's someone in your immediate family or extended family, or your co-workers at work, or your friends. So thank you for listening. Like, all I'm here to do is give you my experience, strength, and hope. And pray that it'll be a blessing to you and will help someone out there. Thank you so much for listening to the Ken David Stewart Show. And just have a very blessed day. In Jesus' name, amen.